look at this beautiful apple. Think about the journey it made from being a seed in the ground to this moment, right here. There's a story behind every piece of fruit, and that's the magic of nature. <laughs> I'm Noya Das, 31 years old, wife and mother of three, and owner of Israel's largest leading chain of specialty fruits and vegetable stores, which I established 10 years ago at the age of 21. My story begins in the beautiful, green, wide-open orchards of northern Israel. Growing up in a third-generation family of farmers, I always had a deep appreciation for nature. I saw seedlings turn into trees, and how, as the seasons changed, blossoms turned into sweet, ripe, juicy fruit. I'd get a thrill from picking a fresh bitter apple straight off the tree, smelling and biting into it, and being filled with love. It's a feeling of deep connection, and what I call the wonder of creation. So imagine my disappointment as a young girl in the 90s going grocery shopping with my mother. The gap between the vibrant fruits and vegetables growing in the fields and the sad, lifeless produce on the supermarket shelves was devastating to me. Retailers didn't emphasize quality. It was all about keeping the price as low as possible. This didn't make sense to me because, even as a young girl, I knew their consumers would be happy to pay for high-quality, fresh and delicious fruits and vegetables. And I knew products like that existed. I was also very aware of the financial difficulties involved in being a farmer. When my grandfather would go to retail chains with the most incredible produce, he'd be forced to sell it at a loss. This was heartbreaking, and we were not alone. Almost every farmer suffered from financial insecurity, huge pressures, and humiliating treatment. An idea began to form in my mind, a win-win solution that would benefit both health-conscious consumers who wanted high-quality produce and top Israeli farmers who deserve to make a decent living. I envisioned my dream store, beautifully designed, offering sweet-smelling fruits and freshly picked vegetables, excellent customer service and a quality guarantee. Most important of all, the farmers I'd work with would be paid fairly so they could enjoy peace of mind and financial security. I became truly mission-driven at the age of 16, when my family went through a major trauma. My father, a gentle and kind-hearted man, got robbed at gunpoint and was almost killed while collecting payments for our family's produce. I realized that the agriculture industry, which was supposed to be so pure, had become surrounded by criminals, and I decided that changing this would be my life's mission. <laughs> But the road to change wasn't easy. At the age of 21, I decided to open my own business. I approached farmers with my win-win solution, but they all refused to work with me. They were afraid a young and inexperienced woman like me wouldn't be able to pay them. I realized that before they could trust me, I had to prove myself to them, and I was determined to do it. So I went to small mini-markets that didn't have a fresh produce section, I made them a deal. For a commission, I would deliver price and shelf the produce, and they would have more to offer the clientele. I went to over 50 store owners, but almost all of them blew me off. But I didn't give up. Finally, three of them agreed to work with me and placed orders the next day. Now I had to supply the goods. Because the farmers refused to work with me, I had to go to the wholesale market, even though it was against my principles. The wholesale market is open at night. It's filthy and loud, and I was not the kind of buyer the wholesalers were used to seeing. The comments and insults this older man threw at me were unbearable. But I didn't give up. One by one, I checked their goods, even though they were being mean to me, until finally the last one in the row looked at me kindly and treated me like a proper buyer. 
We negotiated a little bit and he sold me everything I needed. I was so happy. But then I looked at a tower of pineapples and cucumbers and watermelons and tomatoes and asked myself, how the heck am I supposed to get all of that into my tiny little car? <laughs> Somehow delivered everything to the minimarket, arranged the goods beautifully on the shelves, and the next morning the store owners and the customers were delighted. They couldn't get enough and immediately ordered more. I kept it up and started to na make a name for myself. Store owners, once turned me down, now begged to walk with me. The wholesalers also changed their attitude. They started competing for my attention, kept their best photos aside, especially for me. They saw my orders kept going, and my checks were reliable, and I became a well-known figure. Farmers also started hearing about the young woman who was operating her own successful distribution line. Now it was time to open my first store. For this, I needed to open a business account and get a loan, something that proved almost impossible. I scheduled appointments with countless bank managers who all dismissed me. Being a young woman with no experience, equity, or rich parents, who wanted to get into a dangerous male-dominated field, I was too big of a risk for them. But I didn't give up. I kept showing up to every appointment as motivated as ever. And finally, the magic happened. I met with a bank manager who surpassed the stigmas and believed in me right from the start. I got a loan, a credit line, and the confidence I needed to know that my dream would come true. I got in my car immediately and drove all over Israel to meet with farmers. I asked them to walk with me, and this time they said yes. I'll never forget a moment I opened my first door. It looked just like the one in my vision, and my heart almost exploded with joy. Word got around, customers came in from all around the area. They heard about the magical shop that sold the most amazing fruits and vegetables, and it was a success right from the start. At first, my schedule was impossible. I'd get to the store at 7 a.m., arrange the fruits and vegetables, walk the cash register, package orders, and pick up orders from farmers at night so it would be ready for my customers by 7 a.m. the next day. I made mistakes along the way, but I never made the same mistake twice. Eventually, I learned how to delegate and was able to open more and more successful branches. Now, I wanted to bring my childhood experience to people's homes. In 2016, I decided to open an online store so even more people could experience the joy of freshly picked fruits and vegetables arriving at their doorstep. Everyone said it would fail, but I believed agriculture was a type of high-tech and I knew there was great potential for growth. My business plan stated the website would be a success if it made as much as one branch. Today, it makes more than all of the branches combined. As I expanded, I was always guided by my desire to support Israeli farmers. I became the informal ambassador, representing them in the media and championing their interest wherever I can. The chain I established, Noya Sadeh, now has 15 branches and an online store under my sole ownership. We employ 375 workers, including my husband and parents. We have two logistical centers that use the most advanced technology. We provide excellent customer service 24 hours a day, and our yearly turnover is over 200 million shekels and keeps going exponentially. But most important of all, we work with more than 500 Israeli farmers who grow the most incredible produce exclusively for our customers. They are treated with the utmost respect and get paid on time with absolute certainty. But my real dream came true, the day I bought my own land and became a farmer myself. 
because agriculture runs through my veins. Seeing my children run through our fields, just like I did as a young girl, eating fresh strawberries straight off the plant, for me, that's the essence of life. And when I think back on the girl I used to be, the girl who wanted to change the agriculture industry and make it fair, did she believe her dream would come true? The answer is yes. I simply refuse to take no for an answer. I always had absolute faith in my vision, my connection to farmers, and my win-win solution. And I know with every fiber of my being that with perseverance, a little girl's innocent dream can change the world. So next time you see an apple, take a moment to appreciate the hard work of the farmers, the effort and love that brought it to this very moment, right here in your hand. Thank you.